Uchi guys got another video here for you. Should I use virtual memory settings or not? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So what is virtual memory? Well, let's take a look right here. If we go to settings and then we go up to system and then we come on down to where it says about, we click on here on Windows 11. And what we're looking for here is advanced system settings. Click on this one right here. And this will open up an old legacy type box called system properties. Inside the system properties, we want to go to settings in the performance area right here. Click on this. And what we need to do is click on the advanced tab. And here we will be able to see our settings panel right here for performance options. Right here is a button called change on the virtual memory settings. This will open up the virtual memory panel from here we will have some settings which we can configure. We're going to go into more details on this in a second. I just want to have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. So if you're looking for cheap Windows 10 Pro or cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM keys, then check out the links in the video description. Create yourself an account, click the buy now button, and also use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order. Once you've applied this to your order, get a 30% discount on all your purchases. Submit your order. They will then send you your key. You can use this to activate your version of Windows. Check the video description for more details. So let's take a look right here. So to customize this, you're going to have to remove the automatically managed page file size for all drives. You can see it's set to system manage size. This means Windows is going to be managing your page file and also managing your virtual memory settings. Now, no page file is a common tweak I see people talking about online. You really don't want to be putting no page file here because you will at some point run into some sort of problem. You can end up with blue screen of insufficient memory error codes. You can end up with other issues as well. If you turn this feature off, you won't be creating any blue screen of death dump files. So you always really want to leave at least some sort of page file on the system. The custom size file here for your virtual memory settings is something people like to tweak. Now, I never really touch this sort of area anymore. I leave this as virtual memory automatically managed paging file size for all drives. There's a total paging file size for all drives down the bottom right here for minimum allowed, recommended and currently allocated. Here is a custom size for your initial size and maximum size. So what are they supposed to be? Well, we'll go through that in this video and I'll show you what some people like to do. So on the custom size here, make sure you've selected the C drive, which is your Windows drive. And for your initial sizes and maximum sizes, it's pretty straightforward. So initial size should be 1.5 times the size of your RAM. The maximum size should be three times maximum size of the RAM. Now, one gigabyte equals 1024. So if, for example, you'll see the examples here on the screen, four gigabytes, eight gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, also 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes. I've worked them all out for you to save you a lot of time if you want to tinker with this uh, particular type of setting. And I'll go through and show you how this is set up and how you do it. So basically, the first thing you're going to need to do is determine how much memory you have on your system, and then you can work it out. So here we have our window open right here. I'm just going to right click on the taskbar and go to task manager and go performance, then memory. And this will tell us how much memory we have installed on the PC. So here is our memory settings right here. Up the top right will be the amount of memory we have. So 32 gigabytes is on this system. So that's what we have to play with. And you're going to have to use the calculations to calculate your particular settings for your memory. So I've done it from 4 gigabytes all the way up to 128 gigabytes. I'm pretty sure there's a setting there for everyone. So let's go ahead and do the initial size of your memory. So open up the calculator by typing calc inside the search box and basically we'll have our calculator open next to. So I've got 32 gigabytes of memory in this system. So we're going to start off with our one gigabyte size of 1024 and we're going to times this by 32. So let's go times 32, push equal and that will give us our figure. 
Now we need to times this by 1.5. So let's go times 1.5 and we can now push equals and this will give us our initial size. So let's go 49,152 right into the initial size box right here. Now we need to find the maximum size here. So let's clear this and go 1024 for one gigabyte times and 32 and then equals. Now we need to times this by three for our maximum size. And then we have 98,304 and that is for 32 gigabytes of RAM. So if you wanted to configure your actual settings, that's how you would do it. You would then click set and this will set that figure for you. You would reboot your PC and now you've configured your own virtual memory settings. This means that uh, Windows is not managing your page file size for all your drives. You have allowed the minimum and maximum settings that you've set inside those boxes. So let's quickly do one for 16 gigabytes because that's pretty much normally what everyone's got. So 1024 times 16 and you would then go equals and then we need to times that by 1.5 like so, and that will give you your 24,576 for the initial size. And for maximum size, you go 1,024 times 16, and you would go equals and then times three. And this will give you your maximum uh, size. So that's for 16 gigs. And you can read that chart. I've broken it all down for you. If you want to configure your virtual memory settings yourself, I personally would leave these alone. I wouldn't touch it. I would leave this to system manage size and I would leave the check mark in automatically manage paging file size for all drives and let Windows deal with this because it does a pretty good job at dealing with it and you won't have any blue screens from it or any sort of issues whatsoever. If you turn page filing off, you will run into some sort of issues down the line. If you're doing heavy tasks like video editing and also rendering out videos and things like this. This is where problems can arise if you turn off the paging file or you've set these virtual memory settings too small and it will cause a problem. So personally, I would leave those as system managed and leave that as is. I know a lot of people are going to debate and argue about what is right and what's wrong. While adding more virtual memory may help improve system performance, the best thing you can do if you have low RAM or small amounts of RAM is upgrade your computer memory to more memory, and then you won't have to do any of these virtual memory settings. So increasing physical memory is probably the best option rather than using virtual memory settings in my personal experience. And I've been doing this a pretty long time. So anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. I'll leave all this information in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support. I'll catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. Bye for now.